Hey everyone, welcome back to the third and final part of our character creation tutorial. Let's get into it. Let's delete the default light, reposition the camera, and add the light plane thing that I like to do. Add a new transparent material to the light plane, change into the material editor. Make sure it's set on object, which it will be by default. Check use nodes. Shift A to add a mix shader, add an emission shader. Connect the output and inputs. Control T to add this node setup if you have Node Wrangler activated in your preferences. If not, Shift A to add a texture coordinate, a mapping, and a gradient texture node. Change the object output to connect to the mapping node. And select the image node, hit Shift S. Navigate to the texture and gradient textures. Select spherical or quadratic sphere from the drop down menu. Crank up the emission strength. Turn it up. And I think our character is looking pretty decent, so don't forget to save. I'm going to set my cursor back to origin and add in a plane to serve as the floor. In the World Properties tab, click this little circle next to Color and select Environment. And then open any HDRI texture you have. If you don't have any, you can get free HDRI textures from HDRI Haven. Link in the description. They're all free and amazing. I use Cloudy Vondel Park. In the Render Properties tab, the Film drop-down menu, I check Transparent. This will let you render your character without the background if you so choose. Now to unwrap and texture our character. Let's mark the edge loop between the arm and body as a seam with Ctrl E and selecting Mark Seam. Same with the neck. And then Alt select the edge loop down the entire side of the body and mark that as a seam. Mark the edge loop between the arm and the hand. We're not actually going to texture most of this character, so it really doesn't matter. Add seams to the head. Something like this should work. With all the faces and the head objects selected, change the bottom panel to the UV editor and hit U to bring up the unwrap menu. Just the basic unwrap will work for this occasion. You can do the same thing with each object. In the UV editor, you can hit N to bring up this side panel. Change to View tab. Under the Overlay dropdown, select the Stretching box. This will give you a good look at how your seams are at limiting texture stretching. Dark blue is good, red is bad. Let's add some materials to our character. Switch to the Shader editor and choose some sort of arbitrary skin color. With Face Selection active, you only have to select one face from each UV island and hit Ctrl L to select that entire island. The first material added to an object will assign it by default to all faces. Any materials added afterwards need to be manually assigned by selecting that material and whichever face you want to apply it to, and hitting Assign in the Materials tab. Let's switch to the Image Editor panel and create a new texture. In the upper panel, change to Texture Paint and to the Tool tab. We can't paint because our model doesn't have any texture to paint onto yet. So go into the Shader Editor, go into the Material tab, and add a new material slot. Name it Face or something. You can either assign the face texture to the eyes and mouth island, or in my case, I assign it to the entire head. Add a texture node to your face material and connect it to the base color. Switch back to the Image Editor and Texture Paint. And as you can see, we will be able to paint the face when we're ready to. For now, I'm just going to change everything back to skin color. Change a few vertices on the head, and unwrap the clothes better in case you choose to texture them. Select the clothing faces and unwrap them. Arrange the islands to use up the space as efficiently as you can. To prepare for rigging, let's go through and apply all of our mirror modifiers. Add an armature, position it something like this. Subdivide it into three parts. Create a chest, neck, and head bone. Extrude out a hip bone. Extrude a leg down into the foot. Subdivide out a knee. Extrude a foot forward. Extrude out a shoulder and an arm. Subdivide out an elbow. And name all these bones with whatever name scheme you like. With a dot R at the end for the right side. Make sure your origin point is at the center. And with the armature selected, go into the armature menu and select Symmetrize. This should give you a left side as well. Now shift select all of your objects and the armature at the end. Hit Ctrl P to assign automatic weights. 
Copy the body bone down to make a base bone. Rename this bone to base. Under bone relations, set the body bone's parent to base. Make sure both hip bones have the body bone set as parent. Now the base bone should move the entire character in pose mode. Looks like the arm bone might be closer to the ear object than the head bone. So automatic weights guessed wrong and assigns some ear control to the arms. With the armature selected, shift select the ear object and change into weight paint mode. I like solid view for weight assigning. Select the head bone, make sure in edit mode all of the ear vertices are selected and hit assign with a weight of one. Now move down the list of bones in weight paint mode. Anytime you see color on an ear, switch to edit mode and assign a weight of zero or remove a weight of one. I'm going to reposition the hip bones slightly. Select the armature and then shift select the pants object and go into weight paint mode. Under weights, hit assign automatic from bones. In edit mode and wireframe, alt select this upper edge loop. Remove all control the thigh bone has over it. I'm not really going to be animating or posing this character too much, so this should work for me as is. I took a picture of my character with my phone and used that as a guide for painting the face. I'm going to try to get my character's skin color to more closely match my character by using the eyedropper tool. The camera is going to be in my way, so I toggle off the main collection's visibility. In the UV editor, re-unwrap the eye island to remove the mirroring and get the eye and mouth islands to take up as much of the texture space as you want them to. Now, add a new material slot and select the skin color again for that slot. Hit the new material button to duplicate the skin material, name it face, and accidentally name your skin texture to F, and then change it back. Add an image texture. Name it face or use the face texture you already have. In texture paint mode, select the fill tool and go into the tool tab. With the bottom panel set to material view, use the eyedropper to select your chosen skin color. Go into image editor, and make sure it's in paint mode and use the fill tool. Select the nose and change its color. Now with the head selected, just start painting in the face using your picture as reference. Your picture will likely have shadowing, so keep that in mind. I'm not great at using Blender's paint tools, but if you mess around with it enough, you can get something decent, even with the couple basic tools. Make sure to always save your textures using the image menu. Also, make sure your face material is signed to your eye and mouth islands, and make sure it has the correct face texture connected to its base color input. There we go! So, there is a ton of hairstyles in Animal Crossing, and it takes forever to show you how to model them all. But I'll quickly show you the basics of making hair. Select these faces and duplicate them with Shift D, then separate them by selection with P. Select the new hair object and give it a different color. Pull it up a tiny bit so the head doesn't clip through it. If you want to make the little sharp hair points, select these back four faces and hit Alt E, select Extrude Individual Faces. Switch your transform pivot point to individual origins and scale them to zero. And now drag them down. Put a couple edge loops in there and select a vertex at the end of each point. Now in side view and with proportional editing on, rotate these slightly. You can add an edge split modifier to make the hair edges sharp like it is in game. Or when you're completely done modeling your hair, you can select the edges you want sharp and hit control E and select edge split. You can do something similar with uneven amounts of faces, so like this 3x3. Three three. Extrude it out, turn off proportional, and scale it to zero. Move the tip around, add edge loops, and rotate, grab, or scale. Just go crazy, make whatever hairstyle you want. Get rid of the shadow along the edge by extruding in a loop. The sideburns might be interesting to do as well. You can make them with shapes or paint them on like Nintendo does. Hopefully this tutorial helped you out. Good luck and have fun modeling your own characters, hairstyles, and clothing. I'd be interested to see what you all come up with. Thanks for watching. Since we literally have no clue what we're doing, all of your support is incredibly appreciated. Also, totally necessary. So thank you. If you enjoyed the video, leave us a like or a comment. And if you would like to help us grow, share our video. Okay, love you, bye.